So we are recording live on Tuesday evening, and currently the Habs are up 2-0 against Vegas in Game 5. They could very well close this out, go back at home, and close out the series in Game 6 in Montreal. And I have to ask, is it about time that we start giving Montreal more credit that maybe they are, in fact, a really good team? The way that they're, I have to say, they're controlling this series against Vegas. They're not giving Vegas anything. Most of Vegas' opportunities are coming from the back end. And the forwards are not creating much. I think Waugh's over, overtime goal is one of their first goals from a forward in the series. So is it time to start giving them more credit? And I know a lot of people, I see it online saying, you know, they're just price. Listen, Montreal is paying price $10.5 million. And the goalie's part of your team. And right now they're getting $10.5 million worth of performance out of that player. He's their best player. If the Leafs' best players who make over $10 million played like that, then Montreal wouldn't be playing right now. So I, I take that notion with a grain of salt. Yeah, he's their best player and he's playing amazing. And without him, they wouldn't be there, but he's part of the team. But I, the rest of the team, the defense has really been solid against the Jets. They've been solid again in this series. They're not giving up much. They're opportunistic. And yes, they're getting some breaks here and there, but maybe, you know, the old saying is you got to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. So I'll kick it to you guys first. The Habs, are they a really good team? Or is this have they just caught lightning in a bottle here? Uh, it, it's hard to say that they're a really good team. And the only reason why I say that is because, you know, I think we talked about it before that if it, let, let, let's call it for what it is. In order to have, in order to have that type of playoff success, you know, you got to get there. And I think, I can't remember who made the point, but without if COVID never happens, they're not in that last year. They're not in it this year. To be a good team, you got to make, you have a, have a good regular season to get into the playoffs. They were handed a playoff spot. And essentially, they're making, they're making good for it. You got to give them that credit. What I do respect them for, um, they play. They all buy into a system. And if you have 17 guys buying into a system, versus three guys trying to do it on their own or high price talent like that. It's a team game. They're playing a fantastic team game. Everybody's contributing to what their strengths are. Okay. Obviously we're, we're seeing with them in Tampa, uh, with them in Vegas, sorry, they're not playing a run and gun game. They're waiting for mistakes. They're getting on the transition. How many breakaways have they had? How many two on ones have they had? How many two on O's have they had? They're just waiting uh, for their chance, and they're actually making the other teams play down to their level. And and I don't mean that as disrespect. I mean that as a way of using their strength to have other teams play to that to, the, to that level. And I got to be honest with you, from what I've seen from Vegas, I have no idea how they got to this point. Uh, Rob made the point. Maybe they're fatigued from the Colorado series. I don't know, Joe. You probably don't agree with that. But I'm 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 trying to figure this out. Like, what happened? Like, how, how are they? Their defense is great. I get it. But I have not been impressed. At all with Vegas, so uh, their center depth might be it, one of oh the worst in the league. Worst oh in the God. league, I would take Montreal centers over Vegas's any day of the week. Ugh. You know, when you lose Chandler Stevenson and like that's like a huge loss for you, like that's a problem because Chandler Stevenson played the whole year with Pacioretty and Stone, and what did he end up with? Twenty-five points. I don't even know. I don't have the stats in front of me, but it wasn't a lot. Put what, it this what, way. Chandler Stevenson is on. He is a free agent in your fantasy league. Let's put it that way. He's not even on somebody's <laughs> roster. That's I how. I, I think I had him. Yeah, so, of course you did. So so pretty much what you're telling me is that Jack Eichel will be a Vegas Golden Knight starting next year. It could be. But I don't know how they <laughs> find the cap space for that. Bobby, I know you you love spouting off about the uh, the Habs. So I'm going to kick it to you. Go ahead. Well, you you that was a very loaded question. So the first one question, the first part of the question was, are they a good team? Was that what you okay? Yeah. No, no, like no, they're not a good team. If they were a good team, then why did three years ago they miss the playoffs? Two years ago they missed the playoffs. Last year they should have missed the playoffs. And this year, again, with COVID, they shouldn't have made the playoffs this year either. If they were such a great team, why would they have missed the playoffs four straight years? Like, I'm not gonna give a team like that credit. Like, great, they got in, they're taking the most of their advantage. Uh, that, like, But at the end of the day, this is the 19th best team in the league. 
And this is what NHL fans wanted, right? This is what every fan claims for. You say, I want parity. I want any team to win. Well, now you're seeing it. Literally any team can win. A team that shouldn't even be in the playoffs is now going to maybe compete for your championship. Across sports, I wanted to do this. The 19th place team in every other sport. You ready for this? This would be equivalent to the Washington Wizards making the NBA Finals. I don't think they made the playoffs. The New York Giants winning or getting to the Super Bowl. And the Miami Marlins getting to the World Series. Montreal is in that category. They're the 19th best team. But so, Rob, obviously, yeah, in the regular season, but they're proving that they're better than a ninth, 19th place team because they beat the Leafs, who are, I would still argue, are a top five team in the league. Mm. And then they destroyed the Jets. And now they're beating another supposed yeah. top five team in the league in Vegas. So so, so now, this is, now this becomes an argument of the, what is the NHL? Because I'm sitting here going, they can't play this style over 82 or 56 or as many games as they do because there's a reason why they're every regular season they're they don't look good. This style is not sustainable. But they do play a good, tough playoff style. And I said at the beginning of the season, I don't know if you guys remember when he had our Hab guy on. We're not gonna say his name and pump his tires, but I said Montreal, I like what they did because they're gonna be a nightmare to play against. And now we're seeing that nightmare. We're seeing that grit and toughness. And I got to say, they're playing with toughness and and swagger and confidence. I see the power of belief. Yeah. That's what I see. And I think it really helps. Everybody's going to say price. This is not price. That's got to stop. But I'm sure those guys sitting in front of price are saying, we have the best insurance policy in that right now. Because I get the feeling going into these games, he's not going to give up more than two or three goals. And that's got to be really confident as a Montreal player to go into these games. The last point I want to make, their defense has been excellent. They have done a great job in, in, in all three series of containing the, the, the forwards, especially in the Winnipeg series and this series, because the, the, the Vegas forwards look out of sorts. They don't look dangerous. The Montreal defense has done a fantastic job in this series. So if Montreal makes it to the final against Tampa or the Islanders, you think they have a shot at winning the cup? Obviously they do if they're in the finals, but this 19th place team who's caught lightning in a bottle here could very well win the Stanley cup. And even against Tampa, who I think we can all all agree, they are by far the best team in the league still over the cap and everything, whatever you want to say about them. But it's hockey. This is a game played on ice with a rubber disc, and anything can happen, right? Montreal certainly can beat Tampa in a short series. Am I am I not wrong here? Well, sure. Uh, The way you know the the the, you know the way the the um, the hockey gods are aligning for Montreal. Braden Point will probably get hurt. Kucherov will probably tear his ACL. Oh, uh, Stamkos is already at 50%. You know, He'll be done by the first game, for sure. Vasilevsky will get pulled, and McElhinney will play the rest, you know, and then there you go. Like, breaks have to happen. What is it? Uh, good to be lucky, lucky to be good, right? Um, I just think, listen, okay, call me the elite bias, but I don't care who is against Tampa. They're in a different stratosphere. And I've said it before, Tampa is just, when you look at their top players in every position, they're either in the top three or five, or top one, two in each position. You get Kucherov, Point, Stamkos, you know, for the forward group. They're they're six they're six D right now. Like you have the best defenseman in the world, the best goalie in the world. Sorry, Price is fantastic as he is right now. Vasilevsky is going to probably win the the Vezina again this year. That that's not a fluke, you know. And not for anything, they won the cup last year, so they have the experience to get through the four rounds. Montreal's caught lightning in a bottle. Tampa has the experience. Uh, and that's assuming they get past the Islanders. Who knows? The Islanders can fluke it out for the true. next two games too, right? True, 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 yeah. But putting eight goals up against Islanders, <laughs> call it a bad day at the office. But if Tampa can kick it into high gear at the snap of a finger, like that's scary. It, it, it's scary. And I think they're on the brink of a dynasty, to be quite honest with you. Uh, and that's what I call taking advantage of a cap situation. Like, <laughs> gee, <laughs> if they're actually We're going to lose a lot of players next year. Though. Hold on a second, though. Hold on a second. You're going to lose Tyler Johnson to Seattle, or whatever it is. That actually helps Tampa. That clears cap space for Tampa. And they've drafted so well where they can, they're going to fill it with in-house. They're going to fill those spots in-house. They've, they've drafted well in the third, 
round four. They're probably going to lose. Sector. They're probably going to lose Kalorn too. They might lose a defenseman. Like it's it's going to be tough. But Joel, their top guys are their top guys in regular season and playoffs. Yes, for sure. And they're paid. They're That's actually great. giving on a team friendly deal, right? But Braden Point has one year remaining on his RFA deal, and then he's. I would assume would want big money, but he's probably going to take a big pay cut just to stay in Tampa, just like all these other players do. I'll tell you right now, if it's New York, Montreal, I promise you, I won't watch one second of that. I'll just sit here and you guys can talk about it. Cause that would be an atrocious final on the eyes for the NHL an atrocious one as awful. I, the Montreal D are and therefore are taking liberties with a bunch of the Vegas guys. I'm, I'm really surprised that Vegas is allowing themselves to be pushed around like this. But when we go back to lightning in a bottle, you know, the, the team that keeps coming to mind for me, and it was a little bit of a different dynamic because it was really goaltending that, that helped. They had good D, but their goaltending was unbelievable. The 2006 Edmonton Oilers. And that is just further proof that in hockey, the 2006 Oilers, who were the eighth place team who played the best team in hockey, knocked them off. And went to within a game of the sta- of of winning the Stanley Cup. I believe they lost to Carolina that year, if I yep. if I remember correctly. And then Carolina missed the playoffs the following year. Yeah. So it's just this is what happens in hockey. I will say this: if this Montreal team wins the Stanley Cup, God forbid, I can say that I, as you guys have Leaf fans, this will go down as one of the worst teams to ever win a Stanley Cup. It doesn't matter. It means nothing. All True. the breaks mean nothing. That's right. Because at the end of the day, they will be the champion. Yeah, that's right. But, you know, that, 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 th- this will be a, they'll have gotten a few breaks and it'll be the worst team, in my opinion. Maybe you guys would disagree, but this will be the worst team to win a Stanley Cup in, I can, I can even think of. Yeah. And they'll, they most likely, I don't, I don't think they make the playoffs next year. I, and that's I without obviously seeing what happens in the offseason, but in that division that they're going back into, I just don't see over 82 no. games who they're better than. It's right? just not sustainable. The, their, their style of hockey of just grinding out and playing defensive style, that's great in the playoffs. You can do that for a few weeks. You can't do that for six months. It's just there's well, a reason I, they, they have no regular season success. Uh, uh, unless they hope another pandemic or disease yeah. hits. Then they're, then, they're, then they're a playoff <laughs> lock, you know? The, yeah. Just This is a team that should, without COVID, misses the playoffs four years in a row. And they have a good shot of winning the Stanley Cup. This is an indictment on hockey as far as I'm concerned, in my opinion. All right. There you have it. 